Uh, so today I want to do a small video about those that maybe don't afford the tracking mount and want to do some basic astrophotography uh, using no tracking. I have the virtuoso mount here, but it's set manually, it doesn't, it's not turned on or anything. You can see there's no power attached. I have my Evo guide and my simple SV705C camera. Now for this, for this tutorial, you can use any telescope, so we can use a cheap acrobat instead of this. I'm just gonna show you that you can you can do simple astrophotography without a tracking mount, but don't feel obviously you need to stay to relatively bright targets like uh, Orion, maybe Pleiades, uh, Dumbbell Nebula, Ring Nebula, those those targets, those bright ones. Uh, the faint targets, forget it. You're not gonna you're not gonna catch them. Star clusters are are another type of uh, target that is good for this. I have sharp cap here. I'm going to turn the flash off. I'm going to show you what settings I use for untracked astrophotography. Uh, basically, you want the highest exposure without the stars trailing. So we're gonna test this now. Uh, I think it will be about one second or two seconds. No, it's, and it's windy today, so it's not gonna work how we want it. But as you can see, the stars are trailing, so we, we need less exposure. I'm doing 800 milliseconds, and it seems it seems good. And the gain or ISO, as uh, and the, the SLRs use ISO instead of gain. Uh, you can just do this tutorial with a DSLR, so you don't need this setup, but I'm going to use this setup because it's what I have. I'm going to increase the offset a bit, 20 maybe, or 29, maybe something like that. And again, I think I will leave it there, 500, because the images will be very noisy since you're not using a tracking mount, you have to use high gain. Subtract dark, you can use darks, but I'm going to use hot pixel removal in this case. Flats, it's better if you've used flats, but but in this case, I'm not going to use it. And these are the settings basically that I'm going to use with uh, untracked photography relatively short exposure and relatively high gain so that we maximize. The, the signal because usually we use a tracked mount so we can use longer exposures and it's no problem to use to use lower gain but in this case we have to use very high gain As you can see a star, satellite trail just passed right now and you can start this is sharp by the way and you can start live stacking the camera will focus okay and every every few frames you have to readjust the camera bring it to the center so basically the items you need for this to be successful is either a dslr and a telescope it it is being any telescope like it could be a cheap acromat instead of this and you can simply use a dslr instead as well without without a telescope but in this case i'm going to i'm, I'm going you to use this telescope for the best results, however, to be to fully follow my tutorial, you need an astronomy camera, so you use sharp cap. And this one basically is over about two hundred fifty dollars, so it's not that expensive in my books. But if it's for you, if it's expensive, it's another thing. Uh, but um, basically, I'm going to show you what you can do with this cheap setup. Now, basically, what an astronomy camera has an advantage over a DSLR is Sharkap has a push to assistant. So to find an object, as, as you can probably know, if you have uh, ever done this before, it's very hard to find an object in the night sky, especially with a DSLR, you don't know where you are. Even you try pointing at an object and you don't know where you are. Uh, this, this push to assistant simply is plate solving the sky 
so it knows where it is and it, it will tell you how to move the telescope to, to go to M42, for example, in this case, but it can go to any target. Search a target, I must say, because we're not using go to. And in this case, like it's saying 0 0.55. So we need to move the telescope until it's zero or close to it. And that is like this could be a big number. So if you're very far off, it could be like one or two or, or ten, even depending. Uh, how far you are from the target and you can find the target like that with the DSLR obviously you can't do this like like this for example we're pretty close so that would be, would be considered good as you can see Orion is here so if, it, if it's like 0 0.4 you it's pretty close and you can see it on the on the screen and that is the advantage of using an astronomy camera. So it's better to invest in an astronomy camera. In the long run, it's better. Noise is much less. The results are better. Like there's no comparison between an astronomy camera and DSLR. As you can see, I have Orion on the screen now. I'm going to try my best. As uh, Orion is the best target to try this with because it's the easiest, easiest one. And the black edge is going to start as you can see. Because <laughs> this is a fairly small sensor, that's why it's an issue. But with a larger sensor it won't be this this much of an issue. So uh, the SLR may work better, but on the other hand, the DSLR, you can't live stack with it, so it's another issue. But you can take exposures and stack them later. As you can see, there are details popping out even with 800 milliseconds exposure, and the more, le the more you leave it, the better the image will get, like all astrophotography. And as you can see, there's Sirius, and what what you what you see happening here are these edges. These edges are because the this the object is moving across the sky, so that's why every few frames you have to readjust, pause the stack, and readjust. There's no way around this, unfortunately, with untracked astrophotography. Uh, the wider your camera sensor is, the better the result will get. The less you will have to move. If you like my videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more clear skies